You're using crushed rock. First off, how did you even come up with this idea? Well, I have a degree in geology, and um, soil is basically weathered rock. So what is rock? Rock is made up of a bunch of minerals, and minerals are made up of a bunch of elements. So soil is made up of a bunch of elements. And what I'm trying to do is to add trace elements to the soil to increase plant nutrient density. Mm. What I didn't know is that by adding crushed rock, volcanic rock, basaltic rock, it's a very common rock, to the soil, you actually start to sequester carbon. So that carbon that's in the soil remains there and is stored there, is locked up by the volcanic rock, by the basalt. But, so why does the basalt, why is that rock the best rock, I guess, to use? Very good question. So it's high in silica and, and also magnesium, manganese and magnesium, and these elements bind with the carbon and store it in the rock. Simple enough. It, sound, it sounds simple. <laughs> it sounds simple when you explain it, yes, and, that's, exactly. and that's why you're explaining it. So when we talk about the basalt rock and that's you know, helping these plants and, and everything, you know, say this idea takes off. Is this easy to get, or is this going to be something you know, that has to be uh, mined, and then you have to think about the process of that and the environmental impact of that? Good question. So rock, um, basaltic rock is readily available. It's common rock. It's, vo it's volcanic. It's extrusive. So it's when a volcano erupts 90% of the time, what's coming out of it is, is basalt. So it's, it's rock that's widely available around the world. Um, you can purchase it online or go to your local quarry. Very easy. So how exactly are you measuring how much carbon is being sequestered and how much more is it sequestering, I guess, if you will, the percentage? Do you have a percentage? No. So right now we're in the middle of the, of the trial and we have an instrument called a lysimeter, which collects water. And in that water, it's a carbonate or a form of carbon. And, you, and we will be measuring the amount of carbon that's collected in the water. So I'm just curious, you know, that what, what types of things are you planting, you know, in this soil? What, what is it growing? Is it, is it vegetables? Is it food? You know, what, what are you doing with it? Green leafy vegetables. So stuff that's typically high in nutrients. Can you and just, can survive the winter. Okay. Could you just take this crushed up basalt? Does it have to be in the soil or could we just like lay it around areas that need a lot of help, you know, maybe some factories that are really spewing stuff out. Would it, could it work that way? Um, well, f to sequester carbon, yes, I think it can, it can be applied anywhere. Um, well, let me, let me not say it that way, but it can be <laughs> definitely applied agriculturally, but also like in a golf course or, some, or something like that, if you want to put some uh, crushed rock to interact with the, uh, the carbon in the soil, definitely. So this seems like, you know, such a seemingly easy solution. Yeah. So are you hopeful that, you know, maybe there are other easy solutions out there like this that can help us down the road? Definitely. So and that's what we're trying to accomplish. So I'm, I'm doing the, I'm focusing on nutrient density and the researchers at Cornell are focusing on the carbon sequestration. When do you think this is all gonna be ready to go? Uh, well, we started a trial. We started late this growing season, but we also have to gather the data, write it up, and then publish it. So it's going to take a while, about 18 months total. All right. Well, we look forward to it. Quasi Joseph, thank you so much. The so Urban Garden Specialist with Cornell Cooperative Extension.